Uh, thank you, Stefan and Willem, and good morning, everybody, and welcome again uh, to our annual results conference 2023. Um, we had set out an ambitious plan for 2023, and as you will see in this presentation, uh, we are delivering a, a very, very solid result. And this in spite of a macro environment around the world uh, that is challenging and remains so. Uh, on this uh, first point, I want to take the opportunity to thank the whole Mercedes-Benz team around the world. Uh, we have uh, team members in, I think, more than 150 countries, uh, men and women that are dedicated to this brand, dedicated to this company, and it's really their effort that has helped us deliver such good results. So let's, let's, let's have a peek uh, and, and uh, look at the numbers. Um, very much like uh, 2022, you can see that we are performing on a solid and high level. But what stands out with the numbers of 2023, and Harold will go into more detail of that, is the uh, free cash flow number and the resulting net industrial liquidity from that strong cash flow number, which is, of course, a combination of earnings, but also uh, effective working capital management. And if I then uh, take that one uh, a step further and look at what, what have we done at Mercedes to be able to produce these types of numbers. I mentioned the macro environment uh, is challenging, higher interest rates, the uh, economic uh, growth in China reaching a certain maturity and, uh, uh, and not the dynamism that we maybe had in the years preceding. But in that environment, we're pushing forward with executing our strategy. We grew our battery electric vehicle sales for Mercedes-Benz cars by uh, 73% in 2023, and we launched a whole host of new vehicles. Perhaps the most important vehicle of those, the new E-Class, which is always one of the centerpieces in our product portfolio, and it's coming into markets around the world uh, as we speak. But behind the launches of the vehicles that are in the market now uh, sits uh, the intense work on the next generation technologies and the next generation vehicles. And I'm going to allude uh, more to that later in a uh, strategic priority update of what's going on in the company. But it's not just about product. Uh, it's also about the customer and the markets. We pushed ahead, rolling out our direct sales models and tackled big markets like the UK, Germany, but also overseas markets, Turkey and Malaysia in 2023. If we then look at the sales, uh, we stayed at a solid level, uh, similar to uh, 2022. It is true uh, that we were affected uh, primarily in the second half of the year by a supply constraint that will uh, carry uh, into the first quarter of 2024 as well. But we are working on this and um, are confident that with additional measures and additional capacity coming online, that we will get out of this trough uh, by the second quarter of this year, and will then have uh, the full availability of our products. If you take uh, a deeper look at the structure of the sales, on the battery electric side, as I mentioned, for Mercedes-Benz uh, cars, uh, we grew by 73%. So the BEV momentum in the segments that we are, which is largely the large segments with the EQS and the EQE derivatives, uh, that was very strong growth. In fact, in a market like the United States, we actually had the highest share of EVs of any uh, foreign brand. But also on the plug-in side, whereas it was a little bit lower than in 2022, we have kept our market share on the high-end side of plug-in hybrids and uh, have the strongest position there. And going forward, uh, we think that the plug-in hybrids will stay relevant for many years and uh, looking at the products that we have launched, the new E-Class, if you have a plug-in with more than 100 kilometers WLTP range, literally you have an electric car from Monday through Friday when you go to work. But also in terms of our top-end sales, um, compared to where we started maybe three or four years ago, we have come up to quite a high percentage of sales for the top-end side already with 16%. That was carried by growth on the G growth in Maybach, growth in AMG, while at the same time uh, defending our very dominant position for the S-Class. If, if I switch over to Vans, 
Let's see here. If I switch over to vans, uh, the van division had a standout year in 2023. Uh, I really have to applaud the team for what they have been able to achieve. What's underpinning this performance, and I think it's uh, probably a historic high in terms of performance in the van division, is a strong product portfolio. Uh, starting with the Sprinter at the top, but all the, the other vehicles that we have in that portfolio as well. Uh, and also good uh, uh, market exploitation in a market that was a little bit stronger than on the passenger car side. But literally, uh, where we with the Sprinter van, uh, which is it's kind of the S-class of vans in a way, we can see it here next to me, uh, we have a very, very, very strong uh, market share in the relevant markets. But also here, the van team is not resting on its laurels and kind of saying, okay, this is it, uh, let's just cruise from here on forward. Uh, 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 that would be uh, far from uh, uh, the atmosphere that is going on in that division. In fact, uh, van is probably going through the biggest transformation in its history and are now gearing up, investing into the future technologies, uh, preparing the van EA architecture, which will be an all electric uh, van architecture which is only a couple or three years away now. Uh, so uh, the van team really now is going into a phase of investment and preparing and setting up uh, the division for the future. So the strong performance in the van led to higher sales, uh, as I mentioned, and we're also gradually growing the BEV uh, side of vans. Most important is the launch that we just had at the end of the year and the beginning of next year, which is the next generation of the e-sprinter with a whole range of different uh, battery sizes to cater for um, such a variety of customer needs. I don't think there is a business uh, in the auto industry that has um, such a heterogeneous use of our product. You cannot just single in on one segment and say, I make a tailor-made van for just this one segment, because you would then miss the other adjacent 10, 12, 15 segments. So uh, an electric van has to be also a jack of all trades. And that's what we're doing with the eSprinter 2.0. It's coming into the market now, and the first reception has been um, uh, very positive. So if you look at that together, uh, and in our CO2 numbers for cars, in this case for Europe, uh, the uh, passenger car van registrations are also included in our, in our car number here. Uh, hence, uh, without the van side of it, it would be significantly lower still. We were able to reduce uh, the CO2 burden of our vehicle fleet in Europe. We're well within target. Uh, this also includes our smart business, which is now moving from being production uh, under uh, the, uh, uh, the roof of uh, Mercedes and switching to the joint venture that we set up some years ago. So smart comes into the picture for us through pooling uh, from this point forward. Uh, but we have said that in future reporting, because this is a singular view on Europe, we will switch to reporting XEV shares instead on a worldwide basis uh, to cater for the run-up of electrified vehicles around the world and not so much just focusing on, um, on Europe. And with that, I would like to hand over to Harold who will give us a deep dive on uh, what's going on on the financials.